Hello, you're watching the reassembly of iPad Mini. So I done a disassembly video earlier. Now I'm gonna put back the logic board and everything back to the iPad Mini. So for starters, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the lightning cable back to its original place. So just slide the logic book back in carefully. Make sure you don't um, have any connectors that's on underneath the logic board when you do this. Mm. Okay, so what you want to do here is that, uh, let me zoom in for you. This is better. Alright, so you want to slide the lightning connector carefully because this thing is still soldered onto the logic board. Underneath the Wi Fi cable and slide the golden part to its spot location and then you can press down this flat cable and now you want to pry down the ring connector that's next to the speakers so as such so it's making contact with this golden part on the Lightning cable ribbon right here. See? See these? This one in the way. This is where the speakers are getting connections from the lightning cable to from the motherboard. Okay, so there's two screws over here that you want to put in. And there's also two screw this way, like directly inward. So there's four screw over here in total, plus there's two is six in total. So I wanna, I'm gonna do this 90 degree screws first. Um, these are the bigger ones, the longer ones. These. Very good. Um, yeah, here we go. These are the screws for that, for that angle. I'm gonna do one at a time, just in case. So have to use a Phillips screwdriver and I don't know if you can see, yeah you see, you see the hole over here so one at a time I do the search list it doesn't need to be too tight just as long as it's in and once you hit the end of the screwing and that's enough That same can be said to all the screws, it doesn't need to be tight. Especially when in the future you might want to open up the iPad again to do some repairs. Or sometimes you, you forget something and then after you put everything back you have to open it again, that happens. That does happen. So you don't want the screw to, you don't want to warm out the screw, you want to be very gentle and just screw it just right amount of torque. Okay, so that's it. That's in. And now let's do the smaller one on top because that's the second last screws that we took off. That's also in. I don't think the little screws are necessary, but I'm just gonna put it in anyway. Not really sure what it does. It doesn't seem to be uh, doing anything to the connection to the. It doesn't directly. Hold the lightning connector down, but I think what I suspect what it does is oh sorry, I suspect what these two screws do is uh it holds this frame pressed down to the lightning conductor. So this is a weak area design, so it's, this two screws is just pressing down, but it's not directly hitting holding the lightning conductor. I'm not these two screws in, these two screws. Right now let's put a bigger one in and. For these four screw, uh, for these two screws, remember, uh, there is an insulating washer on top of the screw, like in between us. That's sandwiched in between the screw, and as you can see, this ooh, the screw is different. Uh, seems to have an insulating coating over here. 
Let's wait for the camera to adjust. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Okay, so this seems to be like a black insulating epoxy coating on the screw. It's like pent. Let's put that back. Right now it's sandwiching the plastic rim plus the washer. I'm not actually particularly sure what the washer does, but oh, okay, yeah. Uh, no, I'm actually not particularly sure what the insulating washer is for in this case, but let's just put it in just in case. Because what happened is, even with all this insulating, the screw still conductive with the part that's actually screwed into the hole. And that's gonna make a connection from the screw to the speaker and the um, lightning cable ribbon regardless with the insulating washer. Okay, so that's in. Um, next step, we're gonna walk top upper area. So let's zoom out and show you where we are at. So we're done with the lower region. We're gonna leave this region for now. And I'm gonna walk from here and down this way and then finish with this region and put the screen back this way. Okay, so let's zoom in. Alright, so this is the audio jack cable. It goes in first. The larger board is relatively in place and all you need to do now is just be gentle and after you hear a click, it's really hard to do this with camera recording. But yeah, once you, you just use your finger and feel it, and once you hit a click, you're good. And then you just put this locking switch. It's up to you. You can you can tape this thing back on, but or you could just leave it. I don't think it it really doesn't do anything. It's just a uh, grounding, unnecessary grounding on my head. All right, so this one too. This is a camera. It's just. You know, put it on top and press down when it's aligned, and it should be relatively easy. Click, you can hear that, and you just tape these retainers back. The uh, adhesive on it is still good, so you could do that easily. Alright, and this is your. Mm. This is your 5 megapixel webcam, and you also just put this back to its location and press down, and we'll click. Okay, as such. Mm. Let me just take a picture of these connectors really quick. This is for myself. Okay. Sorry, uh, this is just for myself so I could look up for these connectors later after I put everything back. Um, okay, so I guess, I guess that's all the picture I need for now. I'll look up for these connectors later. You can see some residue I did when I was doing the soldering on the larger board. Okay, and let's not put the battery in just yet. There's also a ribbon connector over here. Zoom in. That's from the power, power button, hold button, volume button, and the ribbon cable is down here. Uh, I might add that when I was doing testing with the larger board, apparently you can turn on this iPad with just the battery without the, well obviously without the lighting cable connector to be plugged in but however you cannot turn on this iPad without this cable, this power button cable to be slid in. I thought you could just use the lighting cable and the battery and traditionally for 
iPhone that works. You don't need to have the power button to be hooked up, but in iPad mini, in this case, the uh, power button cable needs to be plugged in in order to turn on the iPad at all. I don't know if that uh, sense true with other iDevices, but for iPad mini, that's what I, what I find out. Um, so that was new for me. Okay, so now that's in. And just put the lash back. It has a backflip mechanism similar to the FPC connector in iPad 3 and iPad 2 and iPad 4, iPad 1. It has a backflip, so you just flip this backwards down and once you insert it. Uh, this connector doesn't, I don't know, this backflip, if you lose this backflip, it will still work because I tried it without the backflip and the power button turns on it regardless. So, yeah. Carry on. So, let's zoom out again. So we're done with the upper region, all the connectors are in place. They will press down and connect it. Now we got a battery and we have... Um, I like to do the battery last if possible. So now I'm gonna do the, the Wi-Fi, one of the Wi-Fi antenna connector. I really just need to align it to its approximate space and press it down. It really helps to have a tweezer. Uh, it would be better to have two tweezers, but I'm too lazy to get the other one. I'm just gonna use a dental pick for now. And yeah, just roughly on top of it and press down. It's probably safer using my finger instead of dental pick for the final push. Alright, so now I could put back the battery because there's not much else I could do here. And I want to screw back this uh, metal shielding for the camera. So I put the screws back here. Let's see. That looks good to me a while for some reason. Alright, so that's the only screw that screws onto the larger board. Um, that's pretty much it. And now we have the LCD and... Uh, and I also want to put this back because I think it needs to be insulated. I have a feeling this, this should be insulated. This metal part shouldn't be exposed. We're gonna tip it back anyway. It's a metal part, you just tip it back. Okay. Alright, so what else? Um L C D goes in first. I already cleaned the L C D earlier with the microcloth. So I'm just gonna do it again. relatively clean. Um, yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna plug the LCD back this way. If you can see. LCD connector. Okay, so this is this one. I'm gonna be very gentle once it's on. You can just press down like such. Once it's it's in the proximal location, that click, and then you can just press down and make the final click. Uh, I think I should have 
Probably. Yeah, that's fine. I could just put the digitizer back now. I probably should put digitizer conductor in first. But that's okay. It worked out. Um, so yeah, the suction car still works for me. It's on the back and it holds the digitizer up. Press up. And I can put the digitizer locking switch on top and just press down with your hand or a plunger too. And that's it. Done and done. Mm. So now the LCD, you lift it up and put it on top of the digitizer, as such. Okay. And you have this metal shell you want to put back. And it goes like as such. There's three screws, they're all the same. So, doesn't matter which one you're putting first. I'm gonna put this one in first. Just so it holds everything down. Ah, crap. It got stuck into the magnet on the side, so now I need a tweezer to remove the screw from the magnet. Okay. Ironically, that magnet actually charged the screw, so it make it become more magnetized for my screwdriver. Alright, so that's, that's everything. Everything inside the iPad. Now, what I need to do now is uh, put this metal, this metal shield back onto to protect the interior part of the iPad Mini. or just make it really difficult next time I try to open it. Something of the sort. And when you put these, this metal shielding back, remember it has a click mechanism on the side. And also beware that uh, these four corners, there's two, like one screw and this screw, it goes onto the LCD screen, not on here. So when you screw these 16 screws, spare those two on the corner. Uh, the LCD screen corner, uh, screw, corner screw is over here. So that's outside of these two on the, on the button, the actual home button. That's outside of this metal sheeting, so you, you screw all the way down here to, until the end, but you spare the top two screws. Okay? Should be straightforward. And these screws can only be screwed in by a screwdriver like this. It's long, it's thin, it's small. These kind of screwdriver doesn't work because it's too thick on the side and it doesn't, the Apple doesn't give you enough space to work with these kind of screwdriver. So it, it may it may be good, great screwdriver because you can change the head and uh, last longer than these cheap uh, Phillips screwdrivers but at this case and scenario, this first screwdriver comes in handy. Alright, so I'm just going to take out all the little screws from here. They're all the same size, all 16 of them. Okay, this is gonna be tricky because um, you're walking right next to very strong magnets, and it's just gonna suck the screw in if you're not careful to the side, and you're just gonna keep on trying until you need a tweezer. I really think you need a tweezer for this. Uh, if you're not careful, then it's just gonna get sucked into the side. This is very time-consuming for. Putting a piece of shielding back. Mm, yeah, I see that. It will be easier if I'm not recording this and doing this, because my so my head could be directly on top. But since I'm recording, it makes it even harder. Um, Alright, so all you want to do is you want to screw the corners first. Oh, yeah. And then you walk in the phone. Okay, so you want to do this side, this side. And the side, the side, and then you walk in the middle. After that. On the bright side, on this other side, uh, on this other side, it doesn't have magnets, so I can just put the screw in normally. 
without worrying too much about it. Actually, before you um, put this plate back on, I suggest you, well, for one thing, I wouldn't put all the screws in. Second, um, I suggest you test if your iPad turns on or not. And actually, I'm gonna do that now, I think. This is not holding it down. Weird. Am I missing a pod? No, I don't think so. Mm. These are the longer screws. We'll do our best there. there is uh, one, two, three, four. There's two longer screws on top over here. So the small screw goes on. These screws are small. These are. There's two are longer. So be careful on that. Just be aware. Uh, I'm gonna test see if the iPad turns on okay and turns off okay with the digitizer and screen. Okay, I'm gonna power it on before I, you know screw and lock everything down. Okay, so it turns on. See the little Apple logo. Now I'm gonna test if the LCD uh, uh, the digitizer glass works as well. Okay, come on, come on iPad, come on iPad Mini. Alright. So, so I can unlock, and things to work just fine. All right, now before I close everything down, I want to shut it off again, just avoid any static elect electric discharge, and it shuts off. Okay, so now I pass off again. And put this back carefully, carefully. Oh. Careful, careful. Okay, just put it back so I have room to walk. Huh. It's not letting me. There we go. Okay. Going back to screwing the screws. This really takes forever. Just doing the screwing. It's as long as. It's almost half as long as uh, putting everything else back together. Ah, that's ridiculous. Touche, touche. To the engineer who designed this mechanism. Touche. I hope the new iPad 5 is not gonna come out like this. Or the iPhone 5, iPhone 6. Is that is just a pain. Why would anyone do this? I mean, one of the major reasons why I would recommend everyone or myself I will buy an iPad or any kind of Apple product is actually because they are very repairable. Since uh, if you buy a Samsung or any Motorola or, or what is it called? Uh, if you buy one of those uh, Google phones with like Samsung, Motorola or other brand, no, that's not Apple. Or a window phone even. The problem with that is the you, it's very hard for you to find a part because they're not as popular as Apple product and they don't have as many third party third party factory that makes like the screen and the camera that can, that allow you to replace in case of like you damage it and you break it. So just simply because of the fact that they're not as popular that makes them less of a good buy for repair wise. Even though it may be easier to repair and change in parts and such, uh, or more simply designed, but since Apple is more popular, and they're just way, way, way more diverse of repair solution available, and more people working on the replacement screens and 
parts and third party uh, batteries and such and the price gets drive down uh, drive down to like competitions and capitalism from the free market and that by itself give Apple a great advantage for people who want to um, have the investment to last I mean I, I will spend that extra few hundred dollars just so my investment in my iPad that I just have the comfort that I know I can get the parts cheaply uh, and replace it instead of buying a new phone or a new iPad every time that when I something breaks on it or it, even in, in, my, in my case even water damage I can fix it on the Apple and Samsung I will be worried because um, all the tools and parts are not readily available and if I do have to swap something I'll have to get a phone an old phone instead of buying from like a vendor just on the part and that would just that would mean that that phone costs the, the part the used part that's like took off on the old Samsung phone will cost a lot more than the the party part that they designed for for example iPad mini simply because it's popular does that make sense? well you tell me somehow that makes sense too I hope I'm making sense to you. I'm just talking right now while I'm doing the schooling so you don't get bored watching me doing this. I am not gonna fast forward this because, um, I don't know, this is actual work for me, I video editing. I don't really like the video editing part, it takes too much time. I'd rather do this and make more videos, more tear down videos. I think I should get someone doing the editing for me. Okay, so I'm, I'm done with all the screws and now I need to put the LCD screen back. I bought an air compressor today. Uh, another one, I have two. But I don't have the other one with me. Uh, I left it on the car. So, I end up don't have an air compressor. <laughs> I'm too lazy to get it. Okay, my coat cloth. I'm done. Now put the screw back on the four sides. One, two, three, four. You can pick any corners. Any corner that's easy to work with. I'm gonna pick to the hardest corner first because I want that screw to be in good and tight. Nice and tidy. This screw I want it in. The other ones we can wiggle. We have wiggle rooms. Uh, as always, you want to put two screws in diagonal, and then you can worry about the other two diagonal screws. See? I got more wiggle room over here. Uh, what am I doing? Something in there. Oh, I know it used to the Philips screwdriver. Just fine. Alright, so when you screw these screws, you because it's very tall, you want to make it's easier to screw it on when it's directly like vertically on top instead um, you don't want to have it tilted on one side and then it wouldn't go anywhere like I did before it's got stuck there right, so directly above vertical and you can pr push down and then start screwing alright everything is down everything is good they are in uh, put the micro cloth and clean the screen. If you're replacing a new screen onto it, uh, they usually come, well, they always come with like a protective layer that you can peel off. And when you do that, do it quickly and have a compressed air or the air compressor ready to blow out whatever dust that might get attracted to the, from the, 
from the static charge that generated from the peeling and I'm gonna say oh wait I need to clean this got dirty because of the adhesive on the credit card on this corner yeah that's pretty much it. everything else is pretty clean Okay, and this I probably want to take it off. This is the adhesive tape from Apple. I'm gonna cut this off. It's just dangling there. Not very good looking. Cosmetic. Doesn't really do anything. This too, I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, so if you're fixing a new screen, like uh, if you're replacing the screen, you're gonna instead you have to, like cleaning right now. You have like a protective layer, and you can just peel it off. What is on the uh, digitizer or the LCD? And another advantage you have have over the me right now <laughs> is like they usually come with a double-sided tape, but I just ran out. So you can put double side tail over here and over here and then you can don't don't put too much because you might want to open it again, you never know. Alright, so now just want you now before you put it back down. Oh yeah, I actually didn't Oh you know what before before I do all that, I, I promise you guys that I want to uh, I'm gonna remove this tape to see if the home button is removable. I really think it's removable, so I'm gonna try. And show you guys if it's removable. Oh no, oh no, it might not be removable. You're cheating me, the home button is part of the screen. Oh, how about that? That is interesting. I really thought it was removable, but it's not. Alright, so it's confirmed, I guess. Um. I don't think it's very different. Look at that. Look at this. The camera, remember the back camera is glued on? Well, guess what? The home button is also glued on. Uh, here. iPad mini's home button. I thought there would be a, a, you know, like a cable over here and a plug. But no, it's a continuous ribbon cable and the sun filters and resistor over here and capacitors probably uh, and this button is actually glued on with epoxy on the side so it's part of the screen you can change that so if the button gets stuck or break then you will have to change the uh, digitizer unfortunately seriously the repair score for iPad mini must be really low it's horrible. I give it a really low grade. I have never seen. Well, iPod Touch is always hard to repair. I guess this is slightly. It's a glorified iPod Touch. <laughs> it's slightly easier to repair than iPod Touch. Uh, now I'm just really playing with this. I need an air compressor. Why didn't I take it off on my car? I'm so silly. It's fine, I got it. Everything is off. Great. Alright, so what you want to do is want to be careful with this. Oh, you're still zooming. Uh, what you want to do, you want to be careful with this ribbon. You want to make sure it's it's free and it's not getting jammed up and bent. And you want to press down on one side. I'm going to press down the lower side first. Just walk your way from 
from the bottom to the top slowly just press down and now in a hurry and if there's anything sticking out just you know gently push it in with a pin Set everything's in. Hmm. Maybe you want to open this here. It's obstructing it somewhere. Yeah, everything's in. Everything looks good. The same adhesive that came off the iPad is still sticky. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the result. This is pretty much the end of the reassembly. I can give you very. Really oh shit, what is this? No, yeah, is that inside? The outside. Ah oh, crap, this piece is a little lint. You see that? It got stuck in there. I have to take this out again. So let's just do that. No. Oh man, I make it too sticky. I make it too. See him. See, this is what happens when you do like a perfect job and then you got a little lint. No, it's hard to take apart. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, let's go over again. That's crazy. Am I gonna have to use a credit card again? God. That can't be true. That's awful. How did they get this sticky? How did it just open? I a little bugger. Get out. Okay, no land as far as I can see. Looks like that one. And maybe here. That's it. I'm gonna make a negative pressure cage hood when I find time. Over the weekend. I'm gonna have to do this lint all over the place. Okay, it's actually very easy to make an active uh, pressure cage. All you need is really just um, any one of those like really high grade uh, times 10 or grade 13 HIPAA filter and a box fan and maybe like some uh, some couple boxes just make you know make like a like a hood and then you have the box fan blowing air through the HIPAA filter in the middle so you're gonna have box fan blowing air through the HIPAA filter and then you're gonna have a little box and you'll be walking inside that box and facing it will be one side open then you, one side open and you're facing the box all right then fan over here HIPAA filter inside and then blow it through it you want to seal that whole thing that's pretty much the concept of a uh, negative pressure room or a hood this room is expensive to make room for ok let's turn it on and see what's up ta da you can tell it was open can you? not at all not even a little bit <laughs> I did an excellent job I think yeah, not very proud. No lint. Everything works. Swipes. It scared me a little bit because my glove was like getting in the way. It didn't work before. But it works. It opened just fine, it moved around. Everything works on the digitizer, screen looks great. And rotation works, volume, volume button is fine, power button is fine. Uh, what is the hope button? Hope button is fine. Everything is great. And let's play something and check the speaker. Yeah, you know, I get this off. off. That, this is not very good for touching on the iPad, so... Let's go to... Oh. And... 
you watch one of my video. Mm, I like to search on this. Seriously, guys, this iPad Mini is so small. I um, okay, so this is my review video iPad Mini, and let's watch it together. So Hi sound guys, works. This is Kai, and sound works. My show. Um, so I just got back from Apple Store, and, and that will be me talking iPad about Mini. iPad Mini. I got a black color because I'm just not that into white. So that will be me watching myself through the web, uh, video camera and to iPad Mini and on um, YouTube. That's a lot of end. That's kind of weird. Okay, I hope you enjoy the reassembly of iPad Mini after it's been taken down to the little mini bits of service mount components and posters because I'm kind of annoying <laughs> talking twice at the same time. But, uh, so yeah, this took me, I think, a lot longer than the iPad 4. I enjoyed the process. I hope you had a good time and you learned something about iPad mini repair and as always I hope this video has been helpful to you uh, before I say have a good day and bid you goodbye I want to just show you how like the case is perfectly preserved and never been damaged um, see that you see the quality of the casing this is what happened when you put heat gun, credit card, and a little bit of patience. And the result is pretty shiny. See? There's no crack, no bend, nothing. You cannot tell it was ever open. And as you see before, even if though I didn't put any uh, double side tape inside, uh, it took me a while. It was not easy to um, open it again with just the original tape. Because when I opened it, I used the credit card. I did not destroy the double-sided adhesive that's already in place. In place. If you do use a knife or a metal part, you're risking damaging the frame, damaging the glass, and damaging the double-sided adhesive when you open this. So, just something to think about. Alright, so thank you for watching. Let me turn this off. I hope you have a good time. You learned something. And have a nice day. Bye. Oh, by the way, watch my video and um, you can win either this iPad or I probably gonna buy another iPad for you guys. So it will, it will be a brand new iPad, don't worry. This one, I'm probably gonna keep it myself and I'll get you guys another one. Uh, when, I, when, when the winner is selected, uh, when I'm gonna buy another iPad. It's gonna be white color. Okay. Thank you very much. Unless the winner wanted blacks so and I'll buy a black one, so. Okay. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day, bye bye. Go watch my other uh, go watch my other videos and enter my free giveaway contest and win this iPad or the iPad 4 that I have currently on the free giveaway. Uh, read the rule from below down the description and it's probably that size, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to put it. It could be that size. And have a nice day. Bye.